Hi, my name is Lorna McLaughlin and I am a Calgary composer and performer. Today I want to present something um, around composition and I call this uh, creativity in a time of crisis. Now, most of the time, creativity happens in a time of crisis reasonably well for artists. But in case you're stuck, maybe this is a slightly different angle for you to consider or try out. I mean, who, many, who has too many techniques? I want to reference the situation that we're currently finding ourselves in right now. I don't always write from this angle, but like I said, I, I think that, that it's a good idea to have lots of different angles. Today, I speak more about composition but I view improvisation and composition to be very similar. I am in awe of great improvisers and when I listen to an improviser that's incorporating the same kinds of devices that a composer uses, I just love hearing that. And in fact, I think that's what they do. It's something that we can hold on to. We can hear what they're doing. So many people, so many creative people are struggling right now and the arts have been hit hard, but really, when haven't the arts been hit hard? Artists know about adversity. But what I found kind of interesting is to think about adversity and overcoming adversity in the same way that we think about evolution. Now, this is not my idea. A lot of people are talking about this, biologically, of course, and then psychologically as well. So when we are faced with something really challenging, sometimes the, the challenge itself leads to our growth, our evolution. As a teacher, I can't even imagine how you're going to over, how you're ever going to continue to learn if you're not thinking about overcoming adversity. Because learning is hard sometimes. In fact, sometimes the harder it is, the greater the evolution. And as we learn about overcoming adversity and it applies to our learning, we start thinking about how we can learn things that are just a little bit harder. You know, like how to write a symphony or how to learn an instrument, how to play an instrument really well, how to paint the Sistine Chapel, how to dance on point effortlessly. These are not new things for artists. Today, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you, to perform, to teach. I've been missing it. And I love getting the feedback to know that something that I say, like all artists, that something I say might resonate with you and that we have a way of connecting that society can see that artists make huge and significant contributions that are sometimes not felt by really left brain thinkers. We're here and we need every artist to be thinking creatively right now. Anyone who knows me knows I spend a significant amount of time in my head. I don't know how this happened. It just happens. And sometimes I find ideas are fascinating, confusing, and the, the whole gamut. But in order to understand them better, I write them down. I try to clarify my thoughts by journaling every day. Every day I write. And then I write music. And this is my motivating force. I write music and I journal to better understand myself and the world that I live in. Sometimes, as I try to clarify my ideas, I come up with metaphors. It just happens. I'm sure that happens for you, or maybe not. <laughs> so, lately I've been thinking a lot about evolution and the ideas around evolution and the theories, because there's a lot of them that have been posed lately. But the idea, the metaphor that I'm thinking of is this overcoming adversity like a fault in a way before an earthquake 
So there's a, a build and a build and a build and then there's a balancing that happens. And I, I think of this as being like um, an awakening, so to speak. So I'm thinking about what you can do with this musically. I mean, that's, that's great because music is really just tension and release, tension and release. And that's not an original thought. I, I mean, I certainly heard my friend quoting it recently, but yes, musicians know tension, release, tension, release. It's what drives us forward. It's what makes music and people and biology evolve. So as I'm thinking about this, I'm sort of thinking titles and the title is hmm, times of adjustment or terms of adjustment or adjustment times. And I'm pounding out a few ideas on the piano and I'm not making any progress. I don't know what my problem is. Anyway, when this happens, and it happens often, I decide to go for a walk. And during my walk, I start thinking about all the different ways that you can build tension as a musician. You can build tension harmonically, by increasing dissonance and resolving to consonants. You can build it instrumentally in arrangements. You can build it with dynamics, pianissimo to forte, that's pretty obvious. You can build it with time. You can build it with rhythm and you can build it with meter. And time is something that I really enjoy working with. And it's especially important in the genre of jazz. So I just arbitrarily decide I'm going to build tension with meter. And I'm walking. And I'm walking. And as I'm walking, I'm thinking, those could be quarter notes. Let's say they are. And let's start imposing some sort of a structure. Because imposing structure is pretty important. Giving yourself a limit as a composer is so important. Otherwise, you're stuck with a blank canvas. And if you have all colors and all textures and all shapes in a blank canvas, it's daunting. So give yourself a limit. Impose a limit. My limit is I'm going to start in 2-4 time, and I'm going to add one beat for every measure. So now I'm going. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And I could go on, but what's important for me at this point is I want to feel that. I want to feel what that meter shift is like and how I might work with it. Get it to the place where it feels, <laughs> if possible, more organic. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. All right, after a little while, it's starting to feel a little more natural to me. And I'm thinking, let's see if I can add pitch to this. Do, do, re, do, re, mi, do, re, mi. And I sort of continue like that until it starts to feel natural. And then I think, mm, I don't want to start on do anymore. Me, me, so, re, me, me, so, re, me, so. And of course, I default to a pentatonic scale because it's in my blood like it's in your blood. And I'm thinking, okay, that's pretty good. Mi, so, re, mi, mi, so, re, mi. I'm 20 minutes from home, and I want to try and remember this as much as possible. So I'm walking, keeping time, memorizing this in my head, trying to picture it so that when I get home, I can write it down. I get home, I get in the door, I write it down. And what I find is that at this point, Nothing is terribly inspired. Nothing has been handed down from God, or maybe not, I don't know. 
I don't really feel like my muse has been involved yet. And contrary to popular belief, I don't need my muse there from the beginning. I'm gonna start, and if the muse wants to show up, then great. I get in the door, and all, all of these ideas I write down. And as I start to write them down, the melody starts to take shape. As the melody starts to take shape, I'm starting to discover that the idea of just building by meter is not helping shape the melody. And I'm gonna have to make some adjustments. <laughs> Time for adjustment. What I discover is that melody really likes phrasing or I really like phrasing. So I was thinking that maybe I could build tension for a while and then release tension at the same, uh, uh, um, what do I want to say, as slowly as I built it, gradually. And if I did it at the same amount of time, then I might be able to have some balanced phrasing that would accommodate this melody a little bit better. So now I have two, four, three, four, 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 five, four, six, four, seven, four, six, four, five, four, 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 three, four, two, four. You try to say that fast. Anyway, I have a balanced phrase and the melody starts to take shape. As I continue, one of the things that I notice is even if the phrases are balanced, the meters do not always give me the kind of relaxation or punctuation that I feel like I really need when I get to the end of my phrase. So now comes the point where I think I need to adjust the meters. I don't need to make it this hard. I have a melody that I'm sort of liking and I want it to cadence better. So if I can change my meter to accommodate a more relaxed kind of punctuation, I think, I think this would be really great. So I changed the meter and the structure now looks like, well, I, I don't want to go into that, just more regular. And the cadence points are settled and I feel good and it's in a key of G and now terms of adjustment doesn't feel like terms of adjustment anymore. It has a hymn kind of quality. It's very positive in the key of G. And now it feels very hopeful. The piece is called Hope now. And I still think it is pertinent to these times. So I've renamed it and I, I'm gonna play a little excerpt for you. But even with this melody, what's really cool is it kind of inspires a lyric that I wasn't thinking I wanted, but sometimes that's the way it happens. I end up with a lyric and I don't want this to be a vocal piece. So I keep the lyric off to the side and I think about it and I just want to work with that. The words are hope. There is never enough time to love you. This I know in my heart, but when time stands and demands your attention now, it's time to start. Yesterday will never pass this way again. Going forward, I know we'll cope with grace and hope and the promise of a new day. From the start of this work, the imposed structure based on a metaphor, provided me with a great deal of creative freedom. And once I was underway, I felt very insp inspired and joyful. And it became my evolution. I want to play a little excerpt for you. This is the beginning of a larger work and a work that I hope to bring to my quintet because I really want to hear what they have to say on this subject, and I know I will be inspired by their contributions. I hope you enjoy.
Thanks for listening.